Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will talk about Ohm's law, law of Ohm. Ohm is the name of German physicist. I think it's German. Um, now this lecture is part of the course uh, called uh, Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the website because it contains parallel to the video. It has um, very detailed notes. Um, and also it's a course, which means on the website all these lectures are presented in certain sequence, divided in certain parts, chapters, whatever, and there are exams, there are some other related uh, lectures to this one, and also on the same website there is another course called Math for Teens, which I consider a prerequisite to Physics for Teens. You do have to know your, your mass. I mean, calculus is definitely one of the most used in, in physics parts of the mass and uh, vector algebra, stuff like this. All right, so we'll talk about Ohm's law. Um, we all know about main concepts of electricity, which is uh, the electric potential or voltage and electric current or amperage. Well, the question is how are they related to each other? Now, you just have to understand that uh, electric potential, the voltage between two different terminals, is basically amount of energy which is needed to transfer certain amount of electricity, coulombs or electrons, whatever the measure is, from one to another. Or, it's the same thing actually, certain amount of energy which is necessary to separate initially neutral, um, electrically neutral object uh, into certain parts. One of them is um, with excess of electrons, which is negatively charged, and another is positively, because they are attracted to each other. So to separate them you need energy. Now, so the electric potential is basically a potential energy which is the result of the spending certain energy to separate these two electrical charges, negative from the positive. And since they have certain electric potential, if you connect them with some kind of connector, uh, this energy will be uh, transferred into some other form of energy, like heat or whatever else. Okay, so, obviously, the more potential energy you have, the more intense the flow of electricity you have between these two terminals. So if you have two terminals of something, like a battery or generator, whatever, one is negative, another is positive. Now, obviously, the more potential energy is between them, the more voltage is between them, the more intense will be the flow of electrons. And intensity of the flow of electrons is the current, electrical current, right? Because it's basically amount of electricity per unit of time. It's exactly equivalent to um, the water. If you have certain uh, reservoir which is above the ground and uh, you have some kind of a pipe which connects it to the ground and the water which is here will flow down. Obviously the higher the reservoir the more potential energy this water has the more intense the flow of the water will be in the pipe. Well intensity means amount of water per unit of time. Exactly the same thing with electricity and electrons. Now, the person by the name Ohm basically discovered that there is certain very simple dependency between the difference in potential and electrical current. And the, the, the actual dependency is very, very simple. The electrical current is proportional to um, uh, voltage. And he introduced a coefficient of proportionality 
which is basically a kind of a characteristic of this connection because there are different connections there is a connection which made of copper there is a connection made of wood and there is a connection made of anything else or water for instance or some kind of doesn't really matter or vacuum vacuum is also a connection although it doesn't really con uh, conduct electricity but it's still a connection so depending on the substance which connects these two terminals with certain difference in electrical potential with different voltage between them so depending on this characteristic the proportionality will be preserved so for any particular characteristic of the conductor for any particular conductor the sigma is the characteristic of its conductivity well the value which is inverse to conductivity is called resist resistance so resistance is more often used as a term in electricity in which case the law looks like this now this is a traditional classical form of the Ohm's law so U is the difference in electric potential or voltage between two ends of some kind of a conductor I is the current which is flowing through this conductor the electrical current the flow of electrons and R is a characteristic of a conductor basically the different conductors have different characteristics so this R is different for different conductors but for any specific conductor whether it's a piece of wire or a piece of wood or or some liquid in reservoir with two terminals inserted in it whatever it is for every particular conductor this proportionality r will be a constant obviously and the proportionality is preserved which means you double the voltage between the terminals you will have the double current the amount of electricity per unit of time will be doubled now as everything else in physics this proportionality is an approximation but under very very broad conditions you can consider this to be the law this is the ohm's law and well let me tell you if you remember nothing else <laughs> from, from from the course of electricity th this actually must be remembered because this is the most fundamental law of electricity which basically is everywhere around us okay fine now it's very easy to basically finish the whole lecture at this particular point because I told you what is the Ohm's law and well I, I said remember it but I don't think it's very interesting what's interesting is to understand why something like this is happening and to understand why we have to go deeper inside the the, the substance which uh, from which the, the conductor actually is made deeper to the atoms nuclei and uh, and electrons so let's just think about how electricity actually is flowing within within the conductor so as we know electricity is the flow of electrons now atoms atoms have certain number of electrons and um, some electrons are on different orbits around the nucleus of the atom right so here is the atom's nucleus and this is one orbit this is another orbit this is the third orbit whatever now the further electrons are from the nucleus the easier it is to basically force them out otherwise I mean nucleus is positively charged there are protons there electrons are negatively charged and that's why the, the nucleus actually holds to its uh, electrons but if you have a strong electric field which pushes electrons towards another end of the conductor so let's say this is a very 
strong negative and this is the positive now these electrons not only they are attracted by the protons inside the nucleus but they are repelled by the electrons here right so if this force is very strong it pushes the electrons out from the orbit where it's um, circling around so it jumps to the next atom that next atom can actually capture this electron or can pass it uh, forward or maybe one of the next electrons uh, one of the next atoms electrons will go out and will be replaced by the electron from this one so it's like a chaotic movement of all these electrons um, in the maze of atoms and some electrons as I was saying are captured by the atoms some electrons are hit um, out from the atoms orbit so this chaotic movement it exists not only when there is an electric field it actually exists all the time electrons are changing especially in certain metals for instance they are changing their um, their nucleus which they were attached to they can jump out because of some whatever is happening there I don't exactly know but there is a chaotic movement but on the top of this chaotic movement if there is a field this chaotic movement has certain directional property and that's how the electric current actually is moving now obviously as the electrons are moved from one uh, end of the conductor to another as I was saying they're hitting other atoms other electrons it's semi chaotic movement and in this particular case um, it's kind of obvious that the more difference in potential between the, these two ends the more intense this movement should be because the electrons are stronger pushed from left to right in, on, on this particular picture okay so there is no doubt that the function is monotonic if this goes up this goes up if the difference in electric potential increases between these two the current should increase so obviously it's supposed to be some kind of a if you have it on a graph this is u and this is i this is voltage and this is amperage current it should be something like this always monotonic we don't know if it's linear but at least it should be monotonic right now the fact that it's a linear function is basically confirmed by experiment so that was basically what Ohm has done he has done a lot of experiments and he found that this is actually a linear dependency okay so as soon as he found out that he realized that this is the sigma the conductivity is a characteristic of the conductor and again he introduced it in some other form where this is a resistance of the conductor so this is a conductivity this is a resistance and they are related very simply or r is equal to one over c okay now let's just think logically what happens if I have this particular conductor this minus. what happens if I will have two conductors like this attached to each other well basically I lengthen my conductor by the same lengths so if this is let's say L this is 2L the lengths what happens well let's just think about it if the resistance of the conductor depends basically on how intensely 
the electrons are hitting the atoms or other electrons because this is actually kind of chaotic movement, directional but, but still chaotic, then it's obvious that the longer the electrons have to travel from left to right, the more obstacles they will have. So it's kind of intuitively obvious and experimentally basically confirmed that if you increase the length of conductor by certain factor, by two, by, by three, whatever, the resistance should also um, increase by the same factor. And that's why the current should decrease by the same factor. So, if you have twice as long a conductor, then under the same circumstances at the ends, at the same U, the same electric potential difference, you will have proportionally smaller um, uh, current. So, the resistance is kind of proportional to the length if our conductor is of a, let's say, cylindrical form. Okay? Now, what does it mean from um, the standpoint of electrical schemas or electrical connections, etc. It means the following. If this is my, is my, my source of energy, electrical energy, This is a typical uh, uh, scheme of electrical uh, circuit. So this is plus and minus. This is a symbol for uh, electrical battery or source of energy or some other. Well, let's just consider it. It's a general source of energy. You can call it battery, okay? With the plus and the min minus. And this is a resistor. Resistor is a term for certain conductor which has certain substantial resistance in it. These are wires which we assume for all purposes of this course that, that they have absolutely zero resistance. So the electrons are going through these very, very freely without any problems. And here they have certain resistance. And let's say this resistance is R. Okay. Now, what happens if I will have two resistors like this in a row? That's basically equivalent to what I was just saying about doubling the length of the conductor, right? Because here we have basically a conductor with certain resistance and then we have exactly the same thing and the amount of resistance uh, which, which, which is here is actually doubled. It doesn't really matter if it's a one piece or two pieces connected with um, some kind of a wire which we assume has no resistance. It's exactly the same thing. So our resistance must be doubled. So in this particular case our current, this is U and this is I. Now, in the first case, I had I equals to U divided by R. In the second case, I have I, U divided by two R's, right? So resistance is doubling, and that's why I put two R's. Now, if I put R1 and R2, then that's basically the same thing here. For instance, this is a, a piece of some uh, material with a resistance of the length, let's say, I don't know, uh, two centimeters, and this is five centimeters. We can always say that this contains 
two resistors of one centimeter each and this is five resistance of five centime of one centimeter each so altogether it's se seven um, resistant re resistors of one centimeters each so that's why it's supposed to be seven that's why it's adding it's very simple arithmetic in this particular case so these two resistors connected in this way it's called a series of resistors resistors so this is a resistor series or series of resistors and when we have a series of resistors our resistance is adding together and this basically is semi-intuitively and semi-logically um, consequence from basically whatever I was saying that the longer you have the the resistor the conductor with ha which has certain resistance the longer you have it the proportionally greater is resistance and proportionally smaller is the current which goes through so the more resistance we put into this circuit the smaller will be the current under the same voltage of the generator of the electricity and this is called a connection in a series so it's very important to remember when you are connecting resistors in a series their resistance combined resistance is a sum of resistances of components okay so that's one way now um, let's just think about the following and it's purely theoretical what if you don't have any resistances at all so if we just connect straight with the wire and the wire we assume have zero resistance well zero resistance according to this formula results in infinite uh, current well again obviously it's not zero but it's a very very small resistance so under the same circumstances the smaller this is the bigger this is so if this is some kind of a constant whatever the battery actually does but if you connect these two poles these two terminals of the battery with some kind of a wire which has very very little resistance you will have a huge electric current and that's what it's called short in electricity so whenever you have an outlet and you have some kind of two wires you stick it in and connect that's what happens well it might actually explode because it will be a very very um, uh, uh, strong current along this short connection and uh, it will basically blow the fuses uh, it will melt the, the the wire i mean it's very big current is a very very strong force which somehow should basically it's amount of energy which is supposed to be immediately released um, speaking about the amount of energy now you do remember from the um, uh, previous lecture um, that um, basically the energy is released whenever you are connecting these two terminals and obviously the more current you have the more energy you have per unit of time so that's why you have such a huge like explosion or fuse uh, burning etc okay now on the other hand if r is equal to infinity so let's say this is a vacuum inside well obviously there is no um, current so I will be equal to zero if r is equal to in infinity i is equal to zero there is no flow of electrons there is no current so that's kind of obvious from the so, so the formula is really very very good and it allows us to, to deal with small resistance with big resistance it's really very very good okay next well next you can think about um, a particular example of this uh, resistor as an uh, electric bulb, right? So you have two wires coming into the electric um, bulb, and the uh, electric bulb has 
this uh, tangent spiral or filament um, and two ends of this spiral basically this is this filament this is tangent spiral and it's connected through some kind of source of electricity here right minus plus plus minus now this tangent spiral has certain resistance and um, the thicker the spiral um, the more electrons can push through it the longer the spiral the more resistance it actually um, uh, has now let's talk about the width of this the, the thickness of the spiral now again if we go into the atomic structure and chaotic movement of electrons if this is your conductor these are your atoms all right so electrons are pushing through this maze of atoms some atoms are capturing the electrons releasing electrons etc they have resistance now what if you have a thicker wire it gives you actually more room to 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 to, to move it's like you have a highway uh, and you double the width of the highway obviously more um, cars can go through same thing here I, I, if you increase the cross section of the wire thickness of the wire obviously the more electrons can go through so resistance should decrease in this particular case now um, what happens if instead of this connection I have this connection a parallel connection well parallel connection of resistors is absolutely equivalent to increasing the thickness of the conductor now what happens in this particular case well let's say you have certain flow of electrons the electric current here it's split here right some electrons go one way and some electrons go another way so what I have in this particular case I have I equals to I plus I2 so in case of consecutive instead of a connection in series where we have addition of resistors here we have addition of currents because all electrons which are coming here should split some of them go this way some of them go that way and then they merge again now let's apply the ohm's law to this and this separately what happens well u is still the same i mean the this e is just wiring which has zero resistance so u is still the same right and so I applied the law Ohm's law here and at the same time let's just consider this as one particular assembly and which which is supposed to have some kind of a resistance r what what if some kind of a black box i don't know what's inside whatever is inside has certain resistance r which i don't know i have to determine it somehow right in case of a series 
my resistance of 2 is equal to sum of the resistances. But what if it's in a parallel connection? I don't know. I have to determine it. How? Well, again, by knowing this, this is my unknown resistance of the whole parallel assembly. This is I which is here. So this is also the Ohm's law, but for the entire circuit. This is the Ohm's law for the first component, this is for the second component, and this is for an entire line, right? So, what I can see from here is the following. I1 from the first one is equal to U divided by R1, right? I2 is equal to U divided by R2 from this one. And the total R is equal to U divided by I. Or, let's put it differently, I is equal to U divided by R. Now, I know that this plus this equal to this, right? I1 plus I2 should be equal to I. What does it mean? Well, it means that u divided by r is equal to u divided by r1 plus u divided by r2. That's what it means, right? Obviously, you may... you can be cancelled out, and I have equation for parallel connection. This is the resistance, well, it doesn't define resistance, it defines actually 1 over r, but it, it looks better in this particular way. I mean, obviously, I can put r is equal to 1 over 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. It doesn't look as good. This looks better. So, in case of serious connection, my resistance is sum. Instead, in case of parallel connection, my resistance is inverse resistance is equal to sum of inverse. And this is actually a conductivity. So you can ex express this one as sigma equals sigma 1 plus sigma 2, where sigma is a conductivity equals to 1 over r. Sigma 1 is equal to 1 over r1, and sigma 2 is equal to r, uh, 1 over r2. So, in a series, we have resistance added. In a parallel, we have conductivity added together. What else? Okay, and the last one which I would like to talk about today is how do we measure resistance? Well, that's a very simple and easy thing. If you have one volt of voltage and if you have one ampere of uh, current, then this is a unit called ohm, the same ohm, and it's a, a Greek letter omega, capital omega. Um, that's the unit of uh, resistance. So, one ohm of resistance is such a resistance. Now, this is U, this is I, and this is R, right? It's exactly the same uh, ohm's law. U is equal to R times I, uh, sorry, U, U, U is equal to I times R, I is equal to U divided by R, whatever it is. All of these are equivalent to each other. So this is the Ohm's law, and from the Ohm's law we derive the unit of measuring, unit of measurement of the resistance. So it's one uh, Ohm if my one, one volt of uh, voltage um, uh, allows me to have one ampere of the current in, in the circuit. Basically that's it. That's for the Ohm's law and that's two basic rules how we calculate the resistance in case of series and parallel connection of the resistors. 
um, and the unit of measurement. That's it. Uh, now, I would like to recommend you to read the text for this lecture, the notes, very detailed notes. It's like a textbook, basically. Um, maybe I missed something. I, I hope I didn't. Um, so, now, this is the first lecture which is basically dedicated to Ohm's law and all the conse uh, uh, co consequences from it. And um, it's really very, um, very big chapter of the electricity. Um, and uh, what's, uh, what's very important is for you to understand that the Ohm's law is the basic, it's the fundamental law of electricity. It's used like everywhere and uh, I will have probably some problems and exams related to um, Ohm's law um, so uh, try to take all these lectures which are under the heading Ohm's law there are probably like four or five different lectures this is the first one of them try to um, go through them very diligently okay thanks very much and good luck